welcome. We are live, I think. We'll make sure we've got audio and everything going. I also, I guess I can move this camera. Whoop, nope, not that. Um, the poll about bearded dragons, that's, that was kind of the point. Like, who would not hit the like button? Only somebody who doesn't like cute bearded dragons. Um, anyway, that's where that came from. So you just misunderstood where I was going with my humor. Uh, tonight we are working in watercolor. I am working on 300 pound. This, I'm not sure if this one was Arches or one of the old Fabriano. I think this was the Arches hot press watercolor paper that I have cut down to a five by seven. So it's super, super thick. I did not pre-size this. I got those stretcher bars I told you guys about a while ago and I have not used them yet. I keep forgetting to get the trays. I need to soak my water, my uh, paper in. So that's why that happened, but, um, or has it happened anyway? Now you'll notice that I've got this started. Don't worry, I recorded it. We're gonna talk through how I got to this point of the painting. But I needed to start here because there is no way, I needed to work flat and then the time of drying it to get the look I wanted, I wanted to get this type of watercolory look. I needed to be able to do that separately. So we will be recording that or doing that separately. As always, you can bid on this if you are in the US. The link is in the video description if my website works. If not, I apologize. Sometimes my website sucks. Um, this will come matted and you can see how much of this actually gets cut off by the mat, but I always extend it a little bit further so that if I have to adjust it to, to make it sit exactly like straight how I want within the mat, I've got plenty of space because I always go a little bit larger. So when I cut the paper, I usually go like this one, the end result is supposed to be a five by seven. So I will normally cut the paper. So it's like a six and a half by eight and a half. I go like an inch and a half bigger all the way around or not all the way around, but just bigger. So that is where I'm going with that. And let's see, um, this is a little bit more teal than what I'm seeing in that camera, but you get the idea. Now the bird, okay, actually let's just go through. Let's get started with the, whoop, let me see, where is the video that I saved? Here we go. Okay, so the first thing that I started with this was using frisket. I used the doc, uh, Dr. Mar P. H. Martins. This is the same one that I use. Oh, wait, I'm in the wrong camera, so I can't show you that. This is gonna be complicated. Let me see, how do I wanna do this? Um, too many things. So this is the P. H. or Dr. P. H. Martins frisket. They're liquid frisket, um, or, or they call it frisket matte liquid because let's just put all the words out of order. This is the same brand that I use their bleed proof white with watercolor that I like so much. This is by far been my favorite masking fluid that I've used. I normally use Winsor & Newton. They're my next favorite. I used, there was another one that I used. I have it over here somewhere and I hate it. It dried up so fast in the, in the bottle. So this one so far, I'm gonna go with that being my favorite right now as far as liquid friskets go. For it, liquid friskets or masking fluid is a little bit of a pain to work with. When you, you can use a brush to paint it on, but it starts to dry. And I've done the whole thing with the dish soap to make it not stick to the bristles so much and then you can clean it. It's still kind of a pain. I only use a paintbrush when I'm working with brisket and I'm gonna show you the whole process of using it in just a moment here. I only use a brush with that if it's like a fluffy edge where I want the feathers or the fur to really mat stick out more here not really the case so what i prefer to do is something like this where I, it's actually one of my soft tools just without the cover this worked great um anything like that i've used these guys the stylus um i've used those for just kind of spreading around the masking fluid in a small area those work well few tips with masking fluid you do not want to um you don't want to leave it on. Let's say I put it on tonight and I'm painting and I'm painting and then I'm going to paint tomorrow and the masking fluid's still sitting there. Don't leave that on for too long. The longer that sits, the le it, it doesn't like to leave the paper. It, it starts to cause some weird issues. The other thing with masking fluid, I don't like, let's say I'm doing, working on something really large. I'm not a huge fan of masking fluid on large areas because it's going to warp paper just like the paint will. And I find that I actually have a bigger problem with masking fluid warping paper than I do the, the actual water watercolor or water. So just a few things um, it, to keep in mind with masking fluid. Plus it would be expensive to use large because obviously tiny little bottle. Um, we're going to take a break before we start painting. We've got from Kirsten set, sent a super, Wade already knows. Kirsten has sent a super chat to the boys. Do you guys want your super chat? Yeah, you can come get your super chat. Say thank you, Kirsten. Oh yes, it's tasty. There's one for you, take it to your bed. That was way too big of a piece, so you're probably gonna choke on it. Take it to your bed, go on, go lay down. 
Keep going. Thank you so much. The boys definitely thank you. And they're just going to stand. I shouldn't have given them such a big piece because now I've, they're going to stand and eat forever. Okay. So masking fluid. Um, what is it? It, it? It's basically like it's going to protect. You'll see. It's easier. I'll just show you. I'll, it was way easier than me to try to explain it. Gibson, go lay down. I don't know why you came back over here. Um, lay down. Gibson, down. Um, so all the way. Come on, really? Good boys. They just needed the camera on them. Um, let's see, what else did I want to go over? So that is what the masking fluid is, and that's what we're going to start with. Now, removing the masking fluid, again, you don't want to leave it on there for days at a time. Kind of like when you, we put the tape on the edge. Ideally, we don't want to leave that on there for weeks or months. The longer that stays, the harder it's going to be to remove. But they have these little, oh, I don't know if I put it in the video description. If not, all the supplies I'm using are in the video description. By all, I mean they will be once I edit this down because I might have missed some. But we've got a little rubber guy that this is amazing amazing for removing masking fluid instead of sitting there trying to pick it off with your fingers. These are a must and if it's not in the um, in the description it will be on the edited version so I'll fix that. But let's go ahead now I want to pull up um, this guy. So that is what we're starting with is the masking fluid. Now I am working flat just because it's easier with watercolor. Uh, tonight I'll be working upright at an easel because that's what my back likes but for the background this was done flat. So let's start with, there we go. Okay, so I'm just going to open it up. And this specific one, it has like a little dropper in it. And it's basically like rubber when it dries. So I'm just going to spread some of that onto the paper, onto the bird and the branch. Those, these are the areas that I want to protect. What's going to happen is once that dries, I can paint watercolor all over, go right over it. I don't have to worry about messing up my bird because it's completely protected from the paint. Now you do need to make sure that you cover everything. You don't want any little gaps, little holes. I do this all the time where there's like one little spot that gets missed because then the watercolor ends up filling that spot. So you have this dark spot there, but there we go. Um, I'm just, see how I'm just turning this to the side and I'm going to fill it in. I'm painting like I would paint with a palette knife. And it's a little bit awkward. I'm just gonna put a little bit more in there. Now this dropper isn't the kind, like it has a squeezy top, but the bottom is sealed closed. There's no like, it's not sucking, it's not like a normal pipette where it's sucking the product into the tube. It just kind of dip it in and, and spread it out. We're going to just spread that everywhere here. Now, of course, if you don't have masking fluid, you can just paint around your subject. It's just a little bit hard. Now, it is easier if, let's say I didn't have masking fluid, what would I do instead? I would get the entire background wet. I would paint all around the bird so it was just water. And then I would paint the wet areas and it'll mostly stay wherever the paint is current or the, the, can't, the paper was wet already. Just filling that in nice and solid. You can see it's a, it's a bit time consuming and then you have to wait for it to dry. So I don't know if you're supposed to use a hair dryer on it. I always do and it's always fine. So once I get that filled in, that will speed things along, but I'm also gonna let it cool and set for a bit. I let probably let it set for a half hour before I came back and painted over it. And I drew this on here with a 4H pencil, just a normal graphite pencil. It's as much easier if you turn to the side as you work. It was a little bit difficult being that the camera was like right over where I was trying to do this. And there are masking fluids. Winsor & Newton makes one that has a yellow tint to it. I like that because it's very easy to see where you've put it on your white paper. The downside is sometimes that yellow does stain the paper. Usually it's not enough that it really matters once you go over it with your paint, but it is something to keep in mind. We'll fill in that branch. Now the reference photo is also linked in the video description. So if you want to get that photo, both my mock-up with the copper look that we're going to be using tonight, which is fun. We're going to be using a product called Aqua Bronze. I've got the copper version. And so it's a metallic type watercolor paint, which I'm really excited about. I haven't tried it yet. So it just came in the mail today. I've tried, well, I did a quick sample with the silver. I've not actually used either in a project. So that will be fun.
And one last portion of the branch. So having pre-done this, this ended up being about, so oh gosh, under 10 minutes of video, but it probably took me an hour. So you can see why I didn't do this portion live, mainly because of the dry time. It's not that it's, it's a lot of painting done, it's just letting it dry. Okay, so it's completely dry. That's what it looks like. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the paper wet. And this is distilled water. This is important. I am using distilled water. I've got my little jars of distilled, one for rinsing the brush and one for loading the brush so that I don't make mud. But you wanna use distilled water because our tap water has all kinds of, we've got fluoride, we've got all kinds of chemicals, uh, chlorine, chloramine, all kinds of stuff that could make your work not archival long-term. So go with distilled water whenever you're using, let's say you're using ink tents, uh, water-soluble graphite, watercolor, anything like that where you're using water on paper, I always go with distilled water. Now acrylics, they're, they're tough. Acrylics, I don't really worry about. But when it comes to on paper like this, that I wanna go with distilled. So I'm using a combination of phthalo green and, what was the other color? Do I have it out here? I don't know where they went. Phthalo green, and it was like a sea something color. This one? No, that's phthalo green. Here it is, it is deep sea green. So those are the two colors here. So I'm gonna get a base layer And I've mixed them in my little ceramic palette. That's just one of these guys. These are the watercolors, um, they're Schmincke, and they come in these tubes, um, little guys there. It's actually how I made my own uh, watercolor pans. I'm gonna throw some more on there. Remember the lighter you want it to be? Just use more water. You're gonna let the white of the paper show through. Now, I wanted to get a lot of texture, but I also wanted a lot of color saturation. So that's why I'm gonna do this in a couple of layers. I tried to record, oh, here, I'm getting it wet. I actually went over it with a fine mist sprayer so I could make it run a little bit more. Now notice that the water or the watercolor, as it gets on the bird, it's just beating up. That's the masking fluid. It's like a rubber seal over it. it is, that paper is gonna be completely white when I lift that. Now all this water, if I was using my usual 140 pound paper, this paper would be insanely warped at this point. And it did warp some, but it dried back. Like the, it's completely flat once it dried because this is such a thick paper at 300 pounds. The 300 pounds does cost a lot more though. So, you know, you've got some give and take there. Another thing is 300 pounds is so thick, you are not gonna be tracing on that. Like I usually will stick my, my work over my line drawing on my computer and just use the monitor to trace on to get clean lines. Yeah, that's not gonna happen here. So I dried that and we're gonna do it again. I think I did three layers. I only recorded two of them if I remember correctly. You can see the, the real difference there between that sea, deep sea green, I think it was, and the phthalo green. Yeah, I was really happy too with the masking fluid on this. It didn't pull up that much of the graphite lines. Some mass, Winsor & Newton removes a lot of my graphite lines. Um, and I don't know, maybe it was the graphite pencil I used. Maybe it was, I, maybe it was a paper, I don't know. But this one I, is definitely like, when I go to buy more, this is for sure gonna be what I get. Now the Winsor & Newton bottles are bigger, but it always dries out really bad. Um, like you don't necessarily want a big bottle because as the air hits it, it dries out faster. So unless you're using a lot of it, that's not even beneficial. And I'm not sure what the prices are on those. So you'll have to look them up. Links are in the video description. Actually, I may not have put the link for the Dr. P.H. Martin's frisket. I'm gonna to have to fix all my links when I edit this. Because normally I use, now I'm just so, sopping some of this up with a regular like bouncy paper towel. 
where it got a little bit heavy. And again, I want those lines. You can see some of these harsher like lines in there. I want those to be there. I'm trying to create a little bit more texture. And these are Schmincke, so very pigmented paints. Taking a pipette and just some distilled water, I wanna create a little bit more. I'm trying to get the paint to push out and create those heavy rings, heavy edges. Not so much on this side because, well, yeah, this side. Um, not so much on that side because that's going to be covered with more of my, if it all goes well, my aqua bronze metallic paint, but on the other side where it's gonna be exposed, I really wanted to make sure I had a few, this side here, I wanted some of the, that texture. So just by touching the paper towel, it'll just kind of soak into it. So I don't have to like touch the whole paper towel to everything, just one little area and the paint will just, well, the water will suck right into that one spot. Now make sure when you're buying your watercolors, check because they're not all light fast. All the colors I own, except for one, I screwed up. It was an indigo blue. Like I have actually have my little color chart over here. One of them is not light fast. I missed that when I was buying them. But when you buy them individually, you can check and make sure. Okay, so it's all dry. I'm just taking, see this little rubber guy? It is amazing. And it just lifts, it grabs onto the frisket. It's a miracle. And I'm just gonna pull that off. Once you get it started, most, most of the time it pulls off. This one pulled off easier than, than I have often seen with Frisket. Like I'm just so happy. Let me get rid of that now. I can just delete that. Um, I am so happy with the results. Oh good, that's still working. I got with that Frisket. So definitely my favorite. Windsor & Newton would be second. And the one, who's the other brand? I think it's over here. I should find it so I can tell you which one I don't like. Because there is one I very much disliked and I don't know where it is. I don't remember who the brand was, um, but it was another liquid frisket, frisket type. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get started on this chickadee. So the reference photo again, linked in the video description. Yeah, Windsor & Newton does not pull off. I never have Windsor & Newton pull off as nicely. And it can have a difference, like how long was the, how old was the bottle? How much air was in the bottle? How much had it already started to dry? Like there are a lot of different factors, but yeah, this one is definitely gonna be my go-to from now on. Okay. So, chickadee, let's pay attention and paint now. Where is uh, my reference photo? And that reference photo comes from Unsplash, so you are, it's royalty free, you're good to use it in your own artwork. Now let's pick some brushes. I'm gonna go with something fairly small. This one is a Windsor & Newton Series 7. That'll work. And I'm going to start with my lighter color. So I've got black, but I want it to be fairly light. Actually, I need a scratch piece of paper too. I am not prepared. I'm sort of prepared. I've got some. We're good. Okay. So this can be my loading one after I get a drink of tea. Sorry if the drinking sounds are picking up. I always hate that one, the sound of drinking. I don't know, does it creep anyone else out? I hate that sound. Then again, I hate anything somewhat ASMR. Okay, where is, I wanna show you guys this. This is a must for me with watercolor because when you look at the dried pans, they all kind of look the same when you get into the darker ones. This has my star rating so I know how light fast they are, like that one right there. Two stars, not light fast. Um, but when I come down here, this is especially helpful so I can see which color I want, which is this one here on the end. This guy all by himself. We're just gonna add a bit of water and I've got some browns on there. I could just mix that with that one. And I probably want a little bit more water so it's a bit more translucent. Actually, why am I making this difficult on myself? I'm, actually, I'm gonna pull my palette over here. I know that means you can't see that one, but I'm just adding water. Nothing too crazy. So I'm not going with my darkest darks yet. I will do that when, like after. This is just my base color. Remember with the watercolor, you wanna start lighter and build to your darker values. It is much easier to make something darker than lighter.
And then where it starts getting a little bit, let's see how the water is building there. I'm just gonna touch it. I just dried off my brush. I tapped it on a paper towel and I'm just gonna touch it and it will suck that water up so it doesn't run. Do the same thing with the beak. Let's get a base layer in there, especially on the bottom. The upper part is a lot lighter, so that will be mostly just water. A little bit of paint there to tint it, but not much. Now, if you have the option, painting flat with watercolor, so much easier. And actually, you get different effects that you can't really get working upright. So that is definitely what I would recommend. Um, but if you are like me and your back and neck doesn't allow for that, that doesn't mean you can't have fun and can't make pretty things. It's just going to be a little bit more challenging for us. I'm working the brush in the direction of the feathers in case I have brush strokes, but mostly this is just going to be solid for now. Now, one of the things I found with the metallic paint, I did a quick test the other night with the silver. I was actually kind of surprised because you open it and it's dry powder. I wasn't expecting that. I thought mine went bad because I haven't used, I bought it a couple of years ago and never used it. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, mine, obviously it just went bad. I waited too long. No, it actually is supposed to be that way. And it kind of makes a mess when you open it. Now, uh, if you, you, if you do crafts, you know that glitter is known as the herpes of the craft world. Like it never goes away. You will always have it everywhere. TMI. Um, but that I kind of felt that way with the metallic paint. While it's not glittery, it is shiny, but it's like it's actually got metal, metal, I guess, pigment in there. But the thing that I found with that is that in the water, when I rinse my brushes, the glitter kind of stay, or not the glitter, but the shiny metallic look kind of stays. So I'm not going to even touch that stuff till I've got everything put away. And that is the only thing I'm working on because of, as I rinse my brush, it's going to end up in my water. It's gonna end up on everything. And so I'll have metallic maybe where I don't want it or a little bit of shine. It's not a lot, but again, it's kind of like glitter where it just, it's everywhere. So just be aware of that. I'm just kind of putting in, mapping out where these darker areas go, these little tiny bird toes. Count how many toes they had really quick up there. There's three. Spoiler alert. I'm just getting a hint of definition. Now, as I go into his eye, I do not want to fill in where that shine is. I'm going to leave that. Now, worst case scenario, let's say I get a little crazy and I go too much where the shine is. I've got my PH Martin Doctor something something white, wherever it is, bleed proof white. Um, those words are not in the right order. I don't even know what order they go in, but I've got that. So I can put the highlight back over it. If I can avoid it, I would rather not have to. So try to leave the white highlight showing. Like don't fill that in with the black. Okay, I'm gonna start filling in some of the darker areas. watercolor is great because using these small like it's the easiest medium to get teeny tiny fine lines little details with take advantage of that if you are somebody who likes detail i love that about watercolor i'm gonna leave mine a little bit blotchy If you look at my sample, my mock-up, I've got a very blotchy look to it that I loved for this. So that's what I'm going for, not, I mean, it's somewhat realistic. We're gonna see some of the feathers, but I really want that softer look. Let me know if this camera freezes up. I've been having problems with it again. We've got dark in here. See, I'm really paying attention. Lee, don't don't overdo with go with the black here. Don't overgo with. That's it's a good thing you're not here for grammar because I am failing at it. I can paint. I can't talk well. I can talk fast. I know people complain about it all the time on YouTube. Let's 
shadow again right under here. Dart frogs are starting up. They will serenade us tonight. I don't know if you can hear them in the background yet. Um, let's get a little bit more water here. I want to soften that a bit. Okay, now I want to move into this tannish tone here. Let's see what colors. I'm going to use two on the end. So I've got number 671 and number 663. I can't tell you what they are, but they're these two colors. That does not look like that. Nope, that's why, because I've got it upside down. These two colors here, so I've got kind of a more burnt umber looking color, or I'm sorry, raw umber looking, and I don't know that that's what that is. It just looks kind of raw umber. And then this darker than raw sienna color. I'm just gonna make up terms. Why won't someone hire me to name things? Burnt sienna looking. I think it's perfect for raw sienna, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna actually pull this over here so you can see me mixing the color a little bit at first. So, and I'm still using the same brush. This is just a number three round. I find with watercolor, I ended up using like one or two brushes for the whole project. I don't know how much of that I can say is sheer laziness, and how much is, is that even showing, kind of? Um, I'm using the back of this to mix my color. I'm actually mixing in with some of that reddish brown that's in there. I don't care if that color is perfect, good enough. But that is what's happening. Okay, I showed you. Now I'm bringing it back over here to make my life easier. Probably could just set one of the cameras up over under the easel so you could see. Should have thought that through before the live stream started. Okay, so we've got a lot of white in the chest. I wanna leave that. I'm actually gonna put a decent amount of water here first. Let's get this wet so it'll blend nicely. Maybe not that wet. So I'm just gonna tap some of that water off on my paper towel, just soak that back up. Now I'm gonna start pulling in those tan tones. Oh, I like that. So that combination of my muddy browns, whatever colors those were, worked out nicely. Got a little bit on the wing. And we're gonna pull a little bit over here as well. I want that to soften out, so I'm just gonna rinse my brush off using just a little bit of water here. I'm gonna let that fade in. Now I need a bit of a grayish tone. It actually has a little bit of blue. I'm gonna mix a little bit of my phthalo, like the blues that I used a lot for the background. I'm just gonna mix a little bit of that in with a little bit of my black and some water, because that is too dark, and pull some of that in here. Remember, when you change your background, pull whatever background color you made into the subject some so he feels like he's a part of the scene. So let's say my background was purple instead. I would want to use purple for some of these shadows. I'm going to rinse my brush, most of it. I'm not rinsing it perfectly clean, most of it off. And then water. I'm going to softly let that fade. I'm going to pull some of those same blue, gray, brown, whatever colors. Seriously, someone should hire me to name these things. A little bit of a highlight there with that blue. I'm gonna pull some of that blue as well over the beak. And now we've got this blue gray, eh, mostly just gray. It's actually kind of a neutral gray. So I'm gonna mix my black with a little bit of brown. And a little bit more water than that. Because that is too dark. And now pulling a little bit more black. And more black. Need a bit more water so that smoke flows smoothly. And then I'll just I'll get into the details and such later. I'll let that dry before I move on with the details of the feathers. I do want to pull some black in there though. 
Okay, and now we need to get the base on the tail and the branch, and then we can start in with our details. So the same grayish tones. I'm leaving some of that white showing through, although I know I'm gonna come back through with my actual white paint. I know that's not very watercolory of me, but then again, neither is the metallic paint, so there we go. I'm gonna use a little bit of brown mixed in with some of this just for some variation in there. Okay, and let's get the base on the branch. So same thing, I'm gonna use those same brown, browns that I used on the bird. Oops, I guess I should get that wet first. you ever have used watercolor and you felt overwhelmed and it was hard to control it is the best medium for mixed medium with colored pencil like i well i shouldn't say best because what um, i also love pan pastels i'm not sure which one i like better but oh my gosh watercolor is a base for colored pencil colored pencil sticks on top so well it's pretty amazing See, I'm just getting a base layer here, and then I will, once that's filled in, I'll go ahead and add some shading. So I've got some darker brown. There's a little of that black mixed in. I don't even care. I just need it dark because, as always, the colors are not that big of a deal. It's your values that matter. Are your darks dark enough, lights light enough? That is what is going to make your work look realistic. It doesn't matter how much detail you put. If your values suck, so will your painting. Well, that sounds harsh, but it's true. I always tell this story, but there was a lady who, see, I'm keeping it kind of blotchy, and then we'll get a definite shadow right under the bird. There was a lady who did portraits. I don't know if she still, I'd assume she still does. So detailed. Like, the detail was incredible. She had no darks and no lights. Well, maybe some lights and no darks. Everything was so mid-range. It was very boring to look at. She was very skilled. But she was apparently afraid of getting her dark values in there, and it really made her work suffer. She would have gotten so much more attention if she was getting um, those values okay let's paint his little feet let's get those with the gray actually i'll put a little bit of blue in there too oops that brush is frayed let's fix that give him a hint of some toes and then i'll clean that up with details after okay let me dry this and then we can work on the details The heat will make your tape want to come up, so you get to fix that. Also, let me adjust my values. Mine is pretty light, but not quite that light. Let me see if the camera can be adjusted without completely screwing everything up. You never know. It could go either way. Let's see. Um, yeah, I don't know if this is, let's see, exposure. That's what I want to mess with. Oh, that is kind of better. Too dark, but I think that, oh, that's a little too dark. That's pretty accurate. There we go. Wow. 
was surprisingly easy to fix. Usually, if you've watched my live streams before, you know I am constantly fighting with getting those values on there right. Okay, so now we're going to start making, focusing on the details and making him look better. So some of this I wanted a little blotchy, but we'll make it better. And I can use the same brush for the details. This is a nice small brush. So I'm going to start with the head. And let's see. I'm going to really mainly focus just with black. And let's start getting these tiny details, tiny little wisps of hair, or hair, fur, the feathers, my gosh, the words, why are they so difficult? I've got too much water on there, so I have to dab that, just barely dab it on my paper towel, we'll fix it. Now a lot of this, parts of the bird are going to have that copper going around it, so the edges I'm not super worried about, like perfecting that. Watch the direction of the feathers, look how they fan out this way. Almost little dots in here. You wanna make sure a lot of that light is showing through. You wanna leave that highlight on the upper section of the head there. Hint of the feathers in there. We also want to darken the eye. And I'm going to go really dark right around that edge. And then we'll come through here with these darks. You see now why I didn't want to go super dark to begin with, because I, if I go too dark then, I can't get these little details. Let me see if I can. Zoom, well, you can kind of see. Oh, I don't have, hold on. One second. Okay, just making sure I have, nope, that was not the right thing. I'm pulling up Discord in case uh, Nick or Joseph, if I miss something they need me to fix, but I'm having issues with my buttons. There we go. Okay, we are good. And it looks like we've got a bid already. This guy already has, somebody wants to take him home, that's for sure. Yay! Happy bird gets a home. I'm going to darken again. See, I can build up darker and darker. But if you start too dark, you're, you can't build up. You, you lose the ability to use your darks like this. I could use white to lighten stuff, but it starts to get muddy if you do that too much because of the way that water reactive, or watercolor reactivates. It just And, and then, you, I mean, part of the, the beauty of watercolor is the way that it looks, that translucency from having the, um, the white of the paper show through like the way that these are built in layers. So as much as I joke, you know, I use white and I think, think it looks great and whatever, there's a reason that watercolor artists are the ones that end up being more purists on stuff. They're not wrong, that it looks better if you can leave the white, if you can master that and let the white of the paper show through, you get such a beautiful look with watercolors. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that you can't make it beautiful while still using the opaque white stuff on top. These little hairs, look how the direction I'm moving that. And if you push harder, you'll get a thicker line using real, a really light hand to keep these nice wispy little lines, which unfortunately don't show up that great on camera. You gotta love webcams. So see how I've got this dark just in this area. And again, I'll show you on the other camera in a moment, but it definitely is a little bit more than what you're seeing there. And I'm not gonna do too much around the edge because again, that copper is gonna go in there. Okay, let's see, what else do we need? 
we need to come down here. We've got some little wispy feathers. I need a bit more water on my brush. Not that much water. I'm going to start defining some of these better now. Now, if you look at the reference photo, there are a lot of lines in there for the little, the flight feather lines. I am not going to fit all those in this size. Like, I'm not even going to bother with that. I just need to get the hint of that in there. Just throw a few in. I'm not going to sit there and go, okay, it's 15 lines. I'm not going to fit 15 lines in there. Going to make some little wisps for the feathers on the back. Now this black is thinned out with a lot of water, but it also has the burnt umber color, whatever color that actually was. Number 663 is mixed in with it. Let's define the tail a bit. A little too much there. Let's add some water and thin that out. It's going to be dark. It's just going to be that dark. Calm down. And we've got little butt floof right around the base of the tail. See, why don't they let me name things? Butt floof. Yeah, I'm going to take a little bit of white I will put around that edge on some of these feathers that I want to have a brighter look to them. Okay, let's do a little toes. I'm going to thin that same black out with some water. And get the shadows really focusing on the underside of the toe there. Some of those highlights show through. Basically getting the hint of the feed. I'm not going to put in like every single shadow the same or line the same. This is little. We just need to get the hint of those little toes. And then I want that shadow to pull down a little bit into the branch. Now in this area, I'm not going to use the straight black. This is going to be more with the browns. Let's get the hint of some of those feathers. And watch the direction. See, like over here, this goes a completely different direction than over there was. He's already cute. I can't wait to start to try that copper. I don't know how opaque the copper is going to be. The silver was pretty opaque. I'm assuming the copper will be the same. I just want to get the hint. I don't need every little feather in there. You can see how they group in little clusters. I'm going to switch over to the bluish tone that I had mixed earlier. So it's got like the black with the blue mixed together. I need this to be fairly light because I'm going up against the white. I don't want this too dark. Just the hint of feathers again. I'm really excited about how he's coming out already. I like this. I want this. Okay, let's add a little bit of white. 
And I'm going to use, actually I can read it off the thing because wait a minute, all know I can't get that name right. Um, this is the Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. That is just too many words. So I don't know that like it's dry. It's completely dry in there. I just add water and I've read and I don't know who was right on this. I've read people say you're not supposed to thin it with water. Like how do you even use it? I don't know if mine came and was bad or if they, let me know. Um, are they always like that? I'm just going to rinse some white right out of there. It works just fine. So I'm not sure why you're not supposed to thin it with water or what that I read was, if that person was right or not. I mean, it was the internet, so they probably weren't right. Need a little bit more water there. Just where it's the brightest. Right along here, I'm going to clean that edge up. Again, that's going to have copper, so not a ton of work needs to be cleaned up there, just a little. Oh, he's so cute. Now I want to get a little bit of a deeper shadow in here. So I'm going to rinse my brush off and dry this and then pull a little bit more for that contrast. So Claire Fine Art, whose channel is linked here in the video description, she had said that she's never had any issue. She watercolors more than me. She said she's never had any issue using a little water to hers. The bleed proof white won't be as opaque if you add too much, but that's a no brainer. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty much been my experience. Oh, and I need to finish the branch. Um, okay. So let's get some of, oh, I need this back over here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's do a little bit of blue with the brown. Kind of a muddy color there but it's a muddy color with the colors I already had so it's supposed to be this way if you one of the things that you can do too if you struggle with creating mud in your paintings or drawings use less colors i mean if i create a muddy mess with three colors that mud's gonna work if i'm using every color i own that is gonna be a rainbow not cute mess Using a little bit of blue, a lot of blue. Let's thin that with some more water. There we go. Okay, I think we get to play with the, I think that's good. We get to play with the copper now, which is good because that's going to take a little bit to fill all that in. Let's see. So since my palette is pretty full with other colors, I am going to be using a bottle cap for this. So actually, we'll do this over here. We'll mix it on this one after I get tea. Okay. So bottle cap. This stuff is powdery. So I'm going to use my soft tool. A palette knife would work. Something, something little to scoop it out of there with. We're just going to put some of that right in there. Now this stuff is smudge proof but it's not waterproof. So like once it's on the paper and it's dry, it's not gonna smudge around or anything like that, but it will reactivate with water. And speaking of, oh, that's not in focus at all. Let's see if I can fix that camera. Um, I 
it was completely in focus earlier too. I checked. I usually forget, but I did this time. There we go. It's because it was on auto and auto is not auto anything. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I'm just going to take that brush. Now remember when I talked about glitter being the herpes of the craft world? Yeah, same thing. So this water now is going to end up having that metallic look to it. So just be aware of that as you're uh, mixing that in. Oh, wow, look, can you see how shimmery? Like, look at that shine. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. The more water you add, the more translucent it will be, obviously, because watercolor. This actually has metal pigments in it. They said that it doesn't have like a light fast rating because metallics don't, but it said that it is very light fast. And this is by Schminka. Like that's the brand. It's the Aqua Bronze Schminka. Schminka. Yeah, I think it's Schminka. And this is the copper one. They have gold too. They have three different golds. I have not tried those. They also, and then of course the silver. So I've got silver and copper are the two that I have now. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to mix more of that. Actually, I almost wonder if I need it to be thicker, but let's go ahead and go with that. And let's see how this goes. Now the damask print, the way that I got that on there, I'm gonna go over that really quick and show you. I made my own using, like if you have, uh, mine was the Silhouette, um, like Cricut, I think people use those a lot. It's my own damask print. Um, so I just use that to trace, but you can get like, just look on Amazon for damask um, or whatever print you want, swirls, whatever, temple, uh, stencils. So those work really well. But the one I'm using tonight was my own design. I don't know if I added too much water to this. I think I did. Like when I look at the little, here's my sample. Yeah, I think I added too much water, but look at how it shines. That is, wow. Okay, I'm gonna add more though. Let's come on back over here and scoop a bit more in. I want it to be really opaque. Says the person who's never used it before, so she doesn't know what she's doing. I think I want it opaque. I don't know. Okay, that would be too opaque. That is like powdery. Actually, I have a pipette over here that I used earlier. Where is it? Well, it is lost into the void of my watercolor crap. Okay, let's just keep doing the brush and stirring that in. Someone who's used this before is probably cringing watching me do this. Okay, back to the easel. Let's see how this, this batch works. It looks pretty opaque. Um, I guess just start up here. Ooh, I don't know if you got, oh my gosh, the shimmer on this. It is so metallic. Like that is some, ser oh, this is pretty. I'm excited. I want to, now I drew my lines out with a white charcoal pencil, so I can erase them if I don't fill them in all the way. Actually, the area I'm working on, that is going to be cut off by the mat, but whatever. I need to practice anyway. Is that not gorgeous? Like it's so much better in person too, the shimmer on this. So I, I made the comparison with glitter, but it's not glitter, like glitter's tacky. Like it's for crafts. It's it just, it, it's it's tacky. This is not tacky, this, this is stunning. Oh wow. Oh my gosh, I'm definitely gonna have to make some stuff like this for my own. I need to try the gold ones too. I'm currently obsessed with the combination of gold and teal. But I wanted the more orangey tone of copper for the fall feeling, so that's why I bought this one before I bought the gold. Pro tip, if you go outside the line a little bit, just make sure you go outside the little bit on the, the other side too. Just make it look intentional. Repeat the mistake so it looks like it was on purpose. 
this seems to be a pretty good mixture of how much water I mixed in with that powder. Like that is really very opaque. That looks so good. Oh my gosh. Look at like the sh look at how when the light hits it. That is so pretty. My excitement level is super high right now. I don't get out much. And I'm going back and forth on this just to make sure both sides match because I'm not like necessarily completely inside the lines. So if I mess up on one side, I just want to make sure it's messed up, messed up on the other so that they match. Match-ish. Sisters, not twins. I'm using the bottom of my arm on my easel as a mall stick so that I'm not like completely resting my hand on the work. It's on, I'm crossing my arms like this to stabilize it. Glassine would be another option. I mean, I've touched it in a couple of places, but I'm trying to keep my hand off it as much as possible. Wow, that is super opaque too. Oh my gosh, I have so many plans for projects I want to do with this combination, the watercolor with it. My friend Kinder told me about this stuff when she's the one who got me started with the Shaminka, like insisted that was the best. So, but she had told me to pick this up and said that I would love it and I just never got to it. But with my current teal gold obsession, I decided it'd be fun. getting a little bit, let's put a little bit more on there. That was a little too translucent. This is really satisfying. How many of you guys now are gonna go out and get this stuff too? Like this is, I'm so impressed. Now I really want all the colors. I think it's two different, or no, three different types of gold, bronze and silver were available. Probably should have just bought the whole set. Although I wouldn't have had it here on time for the video. I decided I wanted this on Monday, I think. Luckily, Amazon came through and had it to me today. I was a little bit concerned about what I would do if it wasn't here. Okay, wait, which one are you? You, you, I'm completely missing a pattern there, but I need this to dry so I can use my stencil again because I'm not even going to try to get that right without it. It's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Which other projects can I go back over and add this to? It seems to be staying wet a decent amount of time in the cup too. Like um, when I use the Touch Up Texture Titanium White Mixture for colored pencil highlights, the brush and pencil product, that stuff dries really, really fast. This is staying wet pretty long. I mean, I guess that makes sense. One's colored pencil, one's watercolor. But it just made me think of it because I do both in these little bottle caps. whole area over here gets mostly cut off but some of it will show so I'm gonna paint it all in just so I can straighten it with the mat and not worry about not having it completely covered 
like if I have to turn, sometimes the mat will, like when I put the artwork in the mat, the artwork isn't necessarily straight by the edge. I need to make it straight by the artwork itself. So that's why I need to go all the way off so I can turn it as needed. The shimmer on this is like, it is better than I hoped. I mean, I did that little swatch test, like this was the, ex wait, where's my paper? I have a scratch piece over here. Oh, I don't know where it was. It was like three little lines with the, the silver just to test it um, on Monday because I to see how opaque that one was. So I really wasn't sure what to expect with this over actual like watercolor. God, there are so many possibilities for this too with using more water and letting this run. This is so cool. I'm going to recommend whoever buys this, as always, always, what, um, uh, UV protecting glass is always ideal. Never ever hang your artwork so that it's getting hit by direct sunlight, no matter how light fast the color is. Like those light fast readings are based on you, 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 they're based on um, they call it museum, like museum conditions or something like that. Basically not in direct light. A little tedious, totally worth it though. Yeah, with the metallics, even with the metallic gold paint that I use with Liquitex Basics, I love that color. They have a silver one too. Um, I think there's a pearl one. I contacted them about that and they basically were like, we can't say it's light fast because you can't really light fast. It's not the same. The pigment, metallics versus pigment, like it's just not the same. But they said that their team is pretty confident in how, like its longevity is supposed to be pretty good. Oh, I didn't finish doing shadows on the branch. Oh, we'll come back to that. Actually, yeah, no, I do want to make a little bit more shadows on it. Now, I don't know if all metallics would be considered archival or light fast. I'm just going by what the company said about this one and what I've heard from Liquitex. And I appreciated that with Liquitex, that they were very honest about that. They weren't just like, Sure, for sure, it's 100%. They like explained what, why they felt the way they did about it, which was cool. Um, I need a little bit more water. I may have to load this up again. Maybe. I don't want to add too much water though. I really like the opacity I'm getting. But my brush is starting to dry out. See if that's too much water, it might be. Oh, no, I think we're okay. I think this all gets cut off by the mat anyway, but. Yeah, I need a little bit more. I'm gonna need more anyway for outlining portions of the bird. So I may as well get that now. I don't think I need a lot, eh, maybe a little bit more. Now this stuff, when I got the silver, when I didn't realize it was powder and I got it all over the side of my hand, it, even when I washed it, it stayed, like it was on my hand. Um, it came off mostly, but it almost looked like if you took a shimmery eyeshadow and smudged it on your hand, that's kind of what it looked like after I washed it off. So, like it came off all the way in the shower, but when I tried just washing my hands in the sink, I definitely have a little bit of a tint to it. Oh, I put too much water. Okay, let's get some more. That's gonna take me a little bit of getting used to how much water versus how much of the powder. 
I apparently suck at making that determination. That looks better. Yeah, just go back over the areas that were a little too translucent. Okay, now I am going to dry this and fix. I need to redo the branch or darken up some areas on the branch. dries at the same rate or not as the, it feels dry as the watercolor. Now let me grab my stencil again and fix my line. Uh, nope, this one's mine. And my charcoal pencil. the main one. I wanted to make sure that went behind the beak. I had that on my sample and I really liked it. So it looks more like the, the mask is behind the bird more. I've got to clean up some of these edges. It's really easy to control. I shouldn't say that because that's almost guaranteed that I'm going to screw something up majorly. Again, if you want to bid on this guy, the link is in the video description. He's a good one. And I need to figure out how to do this so I can do it internationally. Okay, well, I'm gonna rinse that brush. I'm gonna use the water that doesn't have glitter in it. It's not glitter, I should stop calling it glitter. I just wanna add a little bit of shading. So let's grab another brush. Um, almost done with this and we'll go through and answer any questions you have. So if you've got questions, go ahead and leave those now. What am I looking for? Oh, the other water. I can't not make old lady sounds when I stretch for anything. Like, oh my gosh, aging's fun. I'm just taking the brown black mixture that I used before. I just wanna get a, a little bit of extra shading on the branch. I don't need to go crazy. I just want it to have some form. Right now it's like really flat. That'll do. Okay. And let me dry that and I'm gonna go around the rest of the bird with a copper and he will be done. I can't wait to show you in the big camera cause oh my gosh, like in person, wow. This, oh, come on, I'm spilling water all over the place. Um, okay. Okay, now I wanna do a little bit of copper. I'm using that same brush. I used the same brush through the whole painting, minus the branch, just cause I didn't wanna get the metallic all over. Let's use my sample. I'm so excited about this. Like, gosh, there are, I'm, you guys are gonna be seeing me use this stuff all the time now. Like this is just, so pretty. I've been on, like I, I know I keep saying that, I've been on that gold kick anyway. So it seems like a much way easier way than the gold foil, which is gorgeous. I love the look of that in art, but 
This is way easier. You can just paint it on. I'm just picking a few little details. Like I'm not outlining everything. A little bit on the branch right on the edge and the nice thing is if your edges aren't perfectly like you had issues with them this is going to clean that right up but i don't want everything outlined either like i i'm definitely going a little bit more sparingly i tested this i did a digital painting of this too well sort of digital slash photo uh photoshop mock-up but to test where i wanted the highlights or the copper additions So I was able to find that out before. That is about it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And that copper looks so pretty with this teal, like the color, which you're not really seeing there, hold on. I will switch cameras. I'm not gonna sign them just yet. Um, I'll probably, I don't know if I'll sign them with, with copper or not. Let me put the lid on everything over here so I don't spill anything. But yeah, my water is all shimmery from the metallic in it. That will definitely need to be cleaned before I use it again for other watercolor. Um, let's pull this over here so you can see him. Look at the shimmer. Look at how when the light hits it, like it's so pretty. The way, well, it, looks, it still looks better in person. Like this is kind of hard to show you. I'm trying to get to where you can really see the way that shimmer hits. So you kind of see, well, you really see there. So just depending on where and how the light is hitting it. So pretty, so excited. Like, oh, I love finding new, it's not even new. I've had the silver one forever and I never used it. So that will definitely get used for some Christmas type paintings coming up. And then again, let me show you what he will look like with the mat, um, which bidding is still open on. So with the mat, it will fit about like that. So my signature will probably go right along here. And I will probably just sign that with probably black. I'll just do black watercolor. Could also do a black colored pencil. Either way works. So there is the finished painting. So we'll come through to your questions. Oh, I'm so excited. I want to do more. Um, I want to put copper on everything right now. Yeah, uh, I wish I could get this. I'll have to get a good photo. Well, I don't know how well it'll photo. That's that's going to be the negative. Because you're what you guys are seeing, I think it definitely looks prettier in person. It always does. But yeah, um, let's see. Um, where is Discord? Also, so a couple of, an, of new announcements, I guess. We're trying something new. You guys were doing a lot of the um, Inktober and, or whatever, Drawtober, some of those different names. So now we're going to try, if enough of you, and it looks like enough of you guys are, are enjoying it, over on Patreon, I have prompts, and I'll do them every month if you guys like them. Just random prompts that will give you some idea of a quick sketch to do. So this is for Patreon members. If you're at the what is it, phalo green, so $6 or higher tier, you get access to that, or if you're on the legacy, um, $4 or higher, um, you would get access to that. And we're sharing them over in our Discord. There have been some really fun ideas, like today's prompt was a teacup and saucer, and you get bonus points if you wanna add in your current weather for the day, like somehow incorporate that in, which is gonna have to make you think. Dolphin Soul did an alien with his little pinky out holding the coffee. Um, we had Deb, she did the Grinch holding his coffee. Like you guys have had some really neat ideas over there. Definitely check that out. But if you are a Patreon member, you get access to that. You get access to our Discord channel where we chat all week long about art there or our animals and plants and books. And we, you know, whatever you guys want to chat about. We've got channels for all kinds of stuff over there. Okay. 
so, oh, come on, open up. Your questions now. Deborah said, you're just the best. Oh, thank you. I'd like to know what La Cree stands for. So it's actually a combination, the L and the A are from my name. C-H-R-I is my sister's name, Christy. My mom used to breed Basset Hounds, uh, Shih Tzus, and Himalayan. She did the Himalayan ones. Um, that She was not a good mom. The, not my mom. My mom was an amazing mom. The cat was not a good mom. So my mom decided that was not a path she was going to go down. This was in the early 80s. So anyway, um, that's when she just, she was using a combination of mine and my sister's name because the bre you have a breeder's name like, um, it would be like Gibson of La Cree. Or wait, what was Jesse's fancy name? Jesse's fancy name was Kalon's, uh, Kalon's Shining Jewel. Actually, she was Grand Champion multi-best in show, Kalon's Shining Jewel of some, depending on the breeder, of Laheim, who was another part co-breeder, but the breeders argued over whether or not that was part of her real name. That was a whole other funny argument. But anyway, that is what um, La Cree was, my mom's breeder name, I guess. Um, she worked with show breeders, and that was all her with the Bassets and the Shih Tzus, um, actually, and the Himalayan the one time. But anyway, the Himalayan didn't want to be a mom. She wanted to stay my best friend forever. She was. That was the best cat in the world. And I wish every, I would have a cat to this day if they were all like that cat. But anyway, moving on. She, um, so that's what that comes from. It's just a combination of my name, my sister's name, my maiden name. I hated, 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 was made fun of it as a kid. I also did not like, my, my, my bio dad was not a good guy. So I didn't, I just wanted another part of that. And I knew eventually I'd get married and I didn't want to keep changing my artist name. Like I want from very young was like, I'm using this name. So I was probably a teenager when I started, started signing stuff. I went from signing La, Lisa to La Cree somewhere in my teenage years. Um, okay. Python said, was the masking fluid you hated the Daniel Smith one? I've heard a lot of reviews saying the product is a no-no. No, I don't think it was. Hold on, I will find it, because that's actually worth sharing. Let me see if it's over here. It should be over here, or maybe I threw it away because it was terrible. I don't think, that's good to hear though, not to bother with the Daniel Smith one. And honestly, this is my only, I kind of, as much as I'm saying I love this Dr. P.H. Martins, because you know I can't get it right, also, it's my first time using it, and sometimes you'll use something once and you just got a good batch, but they're prone to having, like, uh, Windsor Newton is just prone to having bad, like, they sell bad bottles of that crap. So part of me is like, should I say it's really good? I mean, this one was really good, but because it's the only one I've ever used of, by them, like, I've, I've not had to replace it yet, so I don't know if it's always going to be amazing. I really should clean up under here. Oh, the my owl. He's still for sale. I didn't even know he was down here. That was probably not the safest place to keep him. Let's move you. It you okay? I guess it's not down there anymore. It used to be down there. Um, let me see if it's over here. I've got a couple places I can look. Don't worry, Gibson. I'll just step over you. Don't move or anything. One more place. Good. My OMS was upside down. That's ideal. It's not ideal at all. Yeah, I don't know where it is. Oh, here it is. Gum Grumbacher. Weird, because I love Grumbacher stuff. I didn't like this. I think it was dried really early on. So um, we've got the Windsor Newton. You can see, I'll show you the sizes too. So this is the one that I was talking about that was smaller. Here's the Windsor Newton one. Difference of size. Let's see. This is, does it tell me how big this is? One fluid ounce versus two and a half fluid ounce. This, oh, mine's still wet, but it just, it gets dry in there so fast because like I don't use it that often. I don't go through it that fast. It might be different if I did, but it starts to dry. You get this rubbery seal that you pull out. I'd rather have a smaller bottle. So that is that one. The Grumbacher one is this one. Oh, I think it was the color in this stained the paper really bad. So that was my first thing that I didn't like with it. And... It's dry. I got to use it like once, maybe twice. I don't know, but that, I think that was, it smells funky. But um, yeah, this one's called Miskit Liquid Frisket by Grumbacher. And I love Grumbacher products. I do not love this one. I will not buy that again. Definitely won't buy that. So first choice would be um, my Dr. P.H. Martins of the ones I've tried anyway. My next choice is gonna be my Windsor & Newton. 
and very, very last is this that stained the paper like crazy, the Grumbacher Miscuit. Okay. Let's see. Matt is sending me a picture of chicken. Aw, he said chicken's a grump like dad tonight. Chicken's been grumpy all day. He has seen your cranky pants. Okay, pulling back up the questions. Um, Python said, as an oil artist trying to learn acrylic paints, do you recommend slow dry and medium? Nope. I struggle with the paint drying on the palette, but I try not to mist it because it dilutes it. So drying on the palette, don't put so much out on your palette then. Use less. Like with oils, you can put a fair amount out and it's going to stay wet a long time. It's not going to do that with acrylic, so don't, don't put so much out. My acrylic videos, if you watch some of those, I've shared where with the palette setup, um, it's, I, I use the same palette. It's a glass palette. Don't put as much out. It is going to dry faster. The other thing that I do with the lid, but this is not as I'm mixing because it's going to dry as you mix it, like all of that will, but I keep a wet paper towel in the, the um, it, ha it seals the air out. My palette, like, container thing, the mass, what is it, the Masters? Masterson? Masterson. He's Masterson's um, palette. I keep a wet paper towel so the paint, the chunks of paint stay wet longer. Just don't mix as much. Um, if you do mix a whole lot, let's say you know you're going to need a lot of color, a little container like this, but not this because this product sucks. Um, they sell these little containers and you can pre-mix a bigger batch and stick it in a little jar. That can be helpful. Um, they, at the art supply stores, they carry different ones with different types of lids. They don't stay wet for years and years in something like that. Maybe if you put it inside a baggie, that would help keep the air out because the air does get in all of those, but that works pretty well for keeping like if you needed a large batch. But yeah, it's gonna dry fast on the palette. Slow drying mediums, I hate. I think it depends on the look that you're going for. The look that I'm going for where I'm doing the photorealism, I don't know a single artist whose work I look at and go, oh, I want my work to look like theirs. None of those, none of the artists I admire use slow drying medium. I'm not saying you can't produce something beautiful with it. You can produce something beautiful with sand and a cup of coffee. But I'm also like, that's not my goal. So no, I don't, I don't like the slow drying medium myself at all. It makes the paint kind of gummy, makes it difficult to work with. I just do not like the results. Find mist sprayer and water to keep your canvas wet. And even if you need to lightly mist your, your palette, but mix, mix less on your palette. I just realized one of my lights is out, so that's helpful. Okay, Aline said, question, would charcoal work well and be archival if used with watercolor after watercolor has dried and also acrylic accents? Yeah, you can put acrylic or charcoal can go on top of watercolor. I don't know why, I mean, I guess if you wanted highlights that were opaque with acrylic, that would make sense. But other than that, I can't think of many cases where I would want to use water or use acrylics with, with watercolor. But yes, acrylics and charcoal can both go on top of watercolor. I mean, technically watercolor can go over charcoal too. So that one, you can go either way. But with acrylics, uh, acrylic is water-based. Um, well, both are water-based, but the, the watercolor is not going to stick to the acrylics well because acrylics are a plastic, so that you would just want to do watercolor and then you could put highlights, let's say you're using it for white, for opaque white, that could go over it. But yeah, charcoals, no, no problem. Uh, Kristen said, you talk about leaving the white. Once I bought a painting someone did of a polar bear and all you could see was his eyes, nose, and the tip of his ears. I love it. That's awesome. Fly Me to the Moon said, how did you make your own design stencil tools? Um, if you look up videos for, mine is, I think mine's a silhouette. I think that's what it, it's down under there. Um, my friend got it for me. I only have used it a couple of times, which is such a waste. I, I don't need, like, I don't, I'd have to watch videos all over again how to use it. But yeah, there's videos on YouTube telling you how to use it. And you put, like, you buy these stencil things and you make your own stencil. You, like, design it and import it and it's a whole thing. And I don't even remember how to do it because it's been years. But yeah. I'm assuming it still works fine. But actually, my friend got me that, who is the fr same friend who got me hooked on Schminka and told me about these metallic paints. So same friend, good friend. Everyone needs that friend. That's Kendra. Okay. Um, let's see. Nick said, is there a binder to the metallic paint or is it just the glitter powder? It's just the powder and then you add water to it. I don't know what ingredients there are. Mix with a little water. Contains bronze pigment. Okay, yeah, it does. It says uh, dextrine, dextrine. I can't see it because it's too little. Glue binder. So there is a binder. Hey, I got the answer for you. Yes, there is a binder. Don't I sound smart? I sound smart. Um, 
Python said, have you tried Amsterdam acrylics? I hear that they are decent. I have not. I like the Liquitex Basics because they don't dry as fast for one, which is amazing, but they also dry more matte. And so they're easier to photograph. They're easy for me to use my charcoal pencil when I like, let's say I'm doing an underwater scene and I want to draw a fish on before I start painting, I can draw the fish over the previous layers and it shows up. Like the charcoal, the white charcoal pencil sticks really well. With a higher gloss, most acrylics, now there are other matte acrylics I've not used, but most acrylics have, like even the Liquitex soft body, Liquitex heavy body, they have a, a very plasticky, very glossy look. So one, hard to photograph because that shine. Two, it's, which I can deal with because I mean we have, oils have the shine and we deal with that. It just makes it a lot harder to get good photos. But the the pencil just doesn't stick as well when you get the, the higher gloss uh, pigments. So I really like my Liquitex Basics. That's not to say other acrylics aren't amazing. It's just your personal preference and how you work. Um, Noctis Gamma said, I was wondering what are the three white colors in your small palette? I do see Shmika has Chinese white, titanium white, but curious what the third could be. I'm curious too. Um, I can tell you the numbers. I think I wrote those down. If I tell you the numbers, you can look them up. Where are, where did my paper go? I am losing all of my things. Wait, I think this is it. Come here. Number 102, 101, and white gouache is the third one. So there we go. It is the handiest paper ever. Would I varnish this or spray it? Nope, this is done exactly how it is. No varnish needed. I don't like to use varnish and sprays and stuff if I don't have to. One, you don't know how that's gonna react. So you have to do a, a test of that paper, that paint, that everything, and test it on that because sometimes it will almost dissolve the paint. And with watercolor being, I mean, it reactivates with water. I don't know how it's gonna react with some of those varnishes. I'm sure some of the varnishes are fine. Uh, I don't, I have no interest. I, I just put my stuff behind glass and call it a day. Um, Rhonda said, Daniel Smith has a whole range of tubes in a metallic and shimmer range you should check out. Yeah, maybe. I mean, right now I'm super obsessed with this stuff. Um, I can't, like, you know when you try something and you're like, nothing is better than this ever. Why would I try something else if I could have this? Like, why would I eat other food if I could just eat pizza? Like, kind of one of those situations. Um, I like pizza. Says the person who basically lives off chicken and hard-boiled eggs, so... I wish I could live off pizza. No one cares, move on. Uh, Baby Panda said, I received my black kitty over the weekend. Yay, he's so beautiful, thank you, I love him. Thank you for the card and the stickers you all also added. Oh, what a wonderful bonus surprise. Yay, I'm glad you got him. Uh, Sienna said, my poor Linda is waiting for her cat because I went to send her them at the same time and realized hers wasn't varnished. I could have sworn that one was varnished. It was not, it is now, and now it's, I just need it to dry all the way so I can ship it to her. Sorry, Linda, I screwed up. Uh, Sienna, Sienna, I just butchered your name and I apologize. It looks very pretty. I just can't say it. Oh, wait, huh? She fixed it. Uh, my name is pr pronounced Sianna. 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 Oh, that's really pretty. I'm not going to remember. I'm going to butcher it every time because I suck. Uh, my question is, if you could only have five water brushes, what size would you get? So water brushes, you mean these guys that hold water, I'm guessing? I don't know. They came as a three pack. So I don't know. I, whatever size they... It doesn't say what size it is on here, so I have no idea. Or if it did, it wore off. Whatever size the pack came with, and rounds. I like rounds. I have some that came as flats. I, can tell, I can't tell you the size, I can tell you the shape. Rounds in my water brush. The flat brushes that I got, I don't know if I have any. Well, I don't know. I don't use them. They're, I don't like them. I like my rounds um, for my water brushes a lot. Whoops, there we go. Kendra said, I was at my local fine arts store for paper. They didn't have any sanded papers, but they did have Stonehenge oil paper. Is that the same kind of thing? No, it is not. I don't even know what that is, but it is definitely not the same same thing. Um, would it work for Pam Pastel colored pencil? I have no idea because I don't, I'm not familiar with it. Yeah, I have no idea what that is. Um, sanded paper is very unique. If you wanted to try, like, let's see what sanded paper is like but you're not necessarily like worrying about it being archival yet. You're just going to go pick some up. The only archival sanded paper is Lux Archival. So if you're not worried about it being archival, just go to the hardware store, get like 600 to 800 grit sandpaper, and you can see if you like it. Because um, I think it's right around there. Was it Maybe it was 800 grit. Right in that range. Um, is It's the same stuff. It's just that Lux Archival is archival. The other ones are not like, uh, you are not archival on, they're, they're archival on the front, but not the back. The back affects the front. And I know this, and they say that it doesn't. 
and oh, we've had this painting hung in our, year, our office for 30 years. Okay, well, 30 years ago, you couldn't get an accurate photo, so we don't know if that faded. You don't know if it faded because you've been seeing it every day, or maybe it just wasn't affected by whatever. We don't know. We have no way of knowing, but what we do know is the back is not archivable. We've used the pH neutral pens to test that on the both uh, UART and Fisher 400. UART was worse. UART, I tested the front a couple of years later, sitting in the pack that it came in, I hadn't used it. I tested it to show people like, look, the front is archival, but the back isn't. Front wasn't archival anymore either. They were both testing for not being pH neutral. They were both acidic. Like, wow. So your little claims that are, you know, your little claims of, oh, it's archival. It's not going to affect the front, except it did. And mine was stored the way it came in the original packaging. So was it that the back of the previous layer touching the front of the other was what affected the negative or, or the, the paper? Or was it that the back of that same sheet soaked through to the front of what wasn't acid free? I don't know. I'm not using it on my artwork. I may as well save the money and go buy sandpaper because that's all it is. So anyway, um, there you go. But if you want actually archival, Lux Archival is the only one. And as far as I know, you can only get it from Blick, I think. Overseas, I don't know. I think uh, Jackson's has it, um, but Blick has it. And then I think you can still get it from brushandpencil.com as well. But I know Blick carries it. Uh, let's see. Clark Fine Art said, we have discovered Schminka has the gold, bronze, and silver available as a set. And it's the same size bottles, but only costs about what two individual bottles would cost. Don't tell me that now. I bought mine individual. Well, I did, but... I had already, I bought the silver a while ago and then I bought this one because I only wanted, I only had the money for one and I wanted it overnight, it, or not overnight, two, two day because Amazon, so there you go. Whatever. I'm, kind, I'm kicking myself because I love it so much. I didn't know I was going to love it that much. That's the thing too. It's like, do I want to invest in the bigger set? I really should have because it is amazing, but I didn't know it was going to be amazing. And I, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, face palming. Dolphin Soul said, you have a doggo in your background. I have two doggos in my background. What, oh, was one of them up? Probably. I don't know. Gibson's giving me, what are you giving me the eye for? He's staring. Well, you can't tell. It looks like he's staring at his eye, but that's actually staring at me. You know what? It has been a really long time that you guys, people don't love you. They didn't give you super chats. And now I just, I know, I know. Look at that tilty head because you didn't get a super chat yet. Well, you got one. Chris can give you a super. I feel bad. I'm giving you a super chat. You get a bonus one. Come on. A super chat. You boys have been very good. Oh, we need to get new treats. There's one for you. There's one for a cow. Good boys. Um, good boy. Oh, look, we even took it to his bed like a good cow. Look how hard he tries to be good. It's very hard for a bad cow to be good. Now you, however, circle. Lay down. Go on. Gibson. Lay down. Lay down. Wade's choking on his. Gibson, down. Wade, down. All the way. Lay your bums down. I know, it's just so hard. Poor boys being told to do things they don't want to do. Oh my gosh, we still have almost a half an hour. So if you have other questions, bring them in. What do you guys want to chat about? Um, Python said, there's a brand of handmade watercolor called Stone Ground. I hope you try it sometime. It's carefully handmade in Sas Sasquatch. I can't say that. Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Isn't that Canadian? Sounds like Canada. So I don't know where I think. Geography is not my wrong point, but I'm American, so we all know that. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Gibson was trying to make sure he was the. Oh, yeah. Were you up? Oh, Canadian province. Look at me. Look, it sounded like I knew what I was. I, I didn't know. It just sounded like it to me. Um, let's see. I don't know what else you guys want to chat about because we've got a really long time. That tea is so good. Okay, um, let's see. I'm pulling up my website. I want to see how this, the chickadee bidding is going. Yeah, one bid. Okay, and whoever is, is currently winning that is probably like, would you stop bringing it up? I just want to win. I'll stop bringing it up. Would I ever paint mythical creatures realistically? Yes, I actually love the idea of doing that. Mermaids are, are my favorite. Like I used to paint mermaids a lot when I was younger, so definitely. How about we chat about upcoming live streams? Absolutely, actually, where's a piece of paper? Or I guess I could just write it on my phone. Um, no, wait, I'm gonna make a list. Let's pull up a document and it's getting hot in here. 
Which is weird because it's freezing outside. Um, I need a note. No, oh, there's my notepad. Notepad. And I will just send this to myself. So if you have um, ideas of what you want to see, I need mediums and subject matter. Now, not everything works for a live stream because that's always going to be an issue time-wise. I need to get a hold of Frederick still because I lost my contact info. <laughs> Whoops. So I'm probably going to have to contact them through social media because I don't even know who my contact is anymore. So I need to get some more Canvas. But yeah, um, let's see. Yeah, no, uh, Jen asked, said, I'm not a fan of water-soluble uh, oil paint, are you? Could I explain why? Because it makes no sense to me. It's not even like that much less toxic. It's, you're still using pigments. Like, here's the thing people don't realize. Acrylics are just as toxic as oil paints. The exception is breathing in the fumes with the paint thinner. I get that, but I use an odorless mineral spirit, which is um, the OMS, the Gamsol, is going to be your least, like it's got a higher flash point. So it's like, it doesn't have an odor. It's, I wouldn't breathe, want to breathe it in, but it's fine. Um, like it's, once it's dry, it, the painting, everything is fine. The pigments themselves in acrylics and the pigments themselves in oil for the most part are the same. I mean, you can get the same pigments in either. So it's not, um, yeah, I guess the mixing medium can also be, depending on what you choose can be toxic, but like just what I use is fine. I don't mind it. Like the smell I actually really like. I'm starting an oil painting tomorrow night of an owl. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and I'm looking forward to the smell because I love it. But it's not like using water is not, the water soluble version is not making that big of an impact on toxicity. Like it's still, you can have something that's natural that still has, it, it doesn't mean that it's, all that much less toxic or that it's non-toxic. So I don't, I, I don't see the point. Like, oh, you can wash it in water. That's not, like of all the problems I have with oil paints, that's not one of them. Like I just, I don't get them. I don't like the, the paints that I've used. I didn't like the texture. They were hard as a rock. <laughs> and it can be the, the type of paint, of course, because there is a huge variety in brands with oils, how good or bad some of them are based on, like just the brand, like some of them are hard as a rock coming out. And that's what I found with all of the water soluble versions. I want to say it was Grumbacher or maybe it was Windsor Newton or both. It's been years, but I just didn't like them. I use them with my same stuff, my other oils, just until I ran out because I wasn't going to waste it because, you know, young starving artists, you're not going to waste art supplies. But I didn't like them. I didn't even washing the brushes. They didn't wash well. I still ended up washing them in my paint thinner. So, and I know there's different soaps you can use. I get it. There's all these little tricks you can use. I just don't see the point. I've read articles on what the point is. I don't get it. I don't see it. I don't agree with it. Use what you like. I know of artists who use water soluble and create beautiful, stunning, amazing work. Great. It's just not my preference. Like it's not what I want to work with. Um, let's see. Where were we? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, Elaine was asking if a watercolor, the one, one that Python suggested was light fast. She said she's seen many handmade watercolor and it's so expensive with no light fast ratings. And that is kind of a thing with a lot of art supplies. I am absolutely like a label, don't say the word, Lisa. Um, I, what's an alternative? I'm a, I'm a label lady of the night. That doesn't sound any better. Um, I, want labels when it comes to my art supply. I want a label, I want a brand that has been around for so long and has done the proper testing for light fast ratings that I trust. Like I trust Derwent. When they tell me something is or isn't light fast, I trust them. They're using the proper machines to test it. They're not just sticking in a window and going, let's see what happens. Like, cause that's not really accurate testing. Um, I mean, it's a way to test light fast, but it's not the most accurate. The, the way you actually do official light fast test testing, whether it be ASTM or um, the word just left me. ASTM and what's the other one? There's two. Blue Wool. Um, th that's it. Those are the only two ways that I'm going to accept for like real testing and they, and they use a machine on top of that. I trust certain brands, the big brands. I trust um, Fabric Castell. I trust Caran d'Ache. I trust um, not Prismacolor. They're a big brand, but they, they, they're a big brand who has proven they're not trustworthy. Um, you know, the brands that have been around for a very long time and have proved 
proven to me that their stuff stands the test of time. Frederick's canvases. Their canvases don't fall apart. Their canvases don't cause the problems that I've had with some of the generic stuff or some new brands that have come up that I'm just like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not risking my art on that. So yeah, I don't, a lot of these newer ones, they'll charge up the, like, um, what is it? Um, the Japanese one, um, Holbein is, is one that is really expensive, like color, colored pencils, super expensive. I don't trust them. I contacted them myself and what they told me when they thought I was just a customer and not a YouTuber, because that does make a difference in how you're treated, um, they wouldn't give me information on their light fast. It was their soul, their, what did they call it? It was like their secret sauce, um, basically. Uh, it's our secret method of testing light fast. Yeah, that's not a thing. Not a thing. Don't trust you now. Um, and then all of a sudden, after I made a big deal out of it, because again, they did not realize a YouTuber is who they were talking, or you know, somebody that was going to make a review, um, one of my friends, she, they, she worked with the company and did a review with them and, oh, they, they found her all the information that they refused to give me because it was secret. Um, that says something to me about that company. I don't trust them. They may be fine. I don't know. I don't trust them. They're overpriced and I don't trust them. They, they, the, the, you, you earn trust. And for me, they lost mine and good luck getting that back. Like, and, and their products weren't so good that like other products are better, so no reason for me to spend extra to buy from a company I don't trust. But I see that a lot, like with, um, yeah, the there was a, a lady who was making, I don't know if she still is, but she was saying that she made a white, she was selling it on Etsy, and she made a white that was archival to use on for colored pencil. At the price she was selling it, and the fact that we know she didn't, she didn't do any testing because the lab testing, like, and it sucks. It's expensive. I mean, it's not something that the average person's like, I invented a product and now I'm selling it. Okay, but I don't trust it because you didn't do the proper testing on it because the proper testing is in way overpriced. It costs too much, but whatever. That's just how it is. So yeah, that is actually really common on a lot of, um, a lot of art supplies. It's like, I'm just going to stick with my lady of the night, be a, I'm a lady of the night art brand and consumer. And yeah, I'm going to stick with what, who's proven to be trustworthy. Um, let's see. Do I think bronze would work on intense or weirdly activated? I have no idea. Intense is weird the way stuff sticks on top of it. I think it would be okay. Where is my intense? I don't know. Let's try it. I don't know how it would be long term, but we've got some time. Let me grab an intense pencil. Uh, I'll do a block. I really don't know. Uh, not that one. Let's do a quick test. Where's my? Oh, I can just use the back of this sample paper. I'm going to scooch this on over and. You can still bid on the chickadee. It looks so much better in person. That color, yeah, you don't get the vibrancy there um, on that camera. Okay, so let's just grab a bunch of blue with ink tents. I'm gonna put a few layers because I am curious the more you build up if that makes a difference. So again, we're gonna throw some more. And let's throw some more. And I'll dry that. Oh, don't fall. You're definitely going to fall. We'll just stick you on the floor. We're going to go with good enough. And where did my little cap go that had it in it? Here it is. Is it still wet? I'm guessing I can reactivate it with water. I don't know. I guess this will answer one of the questions I had about this. Can I just throw, like if my watercolor dries in my little ceramic palette, like if it dries in this, I can re, this all dry, but I can reactivate it and use it just fine. I wasn't sure on this. Let's find out because that's mostly dry. Yep, reactivates, looks like that'll be fine. So let's mix that in. I don't know if it'll get chunky though. No, it doesn't look like it. Looks like normal watercolor.
yeah, it looks like it's doing fine. So that should work just fine over Inktense. So that's pretty yay. The only thing for me, why I don't think I would do it on Inktense, unless it was something I was planning on hanging on my own home. Because with Inktense, I don't sell, the only way I sell Inktense is if the buyer, like if I do it on a live stream, because you guys know it's not light fast. So you know you need to use UV glass and all that fun stuff. But if, um, I, it, with Inktense, I, my main thing with Inktense is that I want to use it for, God, how many can, times can I say that? That's not redundant at all. But I want to use it for making prints. I don't know how well the copper is going to photograph. Like, you kind of lose the effect on that. But if you're hanging in your own home, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, let's see. I think, wait, I think Nick's sending me. Yep, Nick's been sending these. Clark Viner said, I would love to see you try the Daniel Smith uh, colors and hear your opinion. I need to. Um, I actually, because you sent them to me, I still have them right here. Look at what she made me. This is from Clark Viner. She sent me this, like it's in my little Christmas thing, because I think like two years ago she sent it to me and I still haven't used it yet. But all of these samples of colors, and she sent me a little, look at, she even made me cards for what colors those are on black or on white. And then we've got notes in the back, like on row. She put so much work into this. I almost hate to use it because seriously, she puts so much work into this little kit for me and I haven't used it yet. And that's like a decent amount of watercolor. Like I can do something pretty good. Yes, I am going to have to do use those soon. Um, although I'm not unhappy that I haven't yet because I'd like to get a better feel, like more experience with using, because I did not use watercolor for a very long time. I've just been using it on and off for the last couple of years. Um, I'd like to have a little bit more experience with the watercolor so that when I, with the Schmincke, which is all I've been using, so that when I try another brand, if I notice a big difference, I can actually notice it. I think when, like, if you're new to a medium, let's say somebody has own, just started with acrylics. They've never really painted before, but they went and bought three different brands and they're comparing it for you. That's not a comparison I care about because you don't know that you're, you're not going to recognize the difference if you're new to a medium. You're not going to notice the things that somebody who like what I would notice with acrylics. If I use it instantly, I'm going to see the, feel the difference between different brands of acrylics. Oh, I should probably do those videos, huh? Yeah, that would be good. But um, if somebody is new to a medium, they're just not going to recognize it yet. They will eventually, but that's not the reviewer who I want. And I feel like that would have been the case with me doing them just, you know, I need to use the Schmincke for a while, get the feel for that so I can actually compare them and notice the differences. So yeah, I, but I've used it enough now. I really should. Okay. Where are we? Alice said, different topic. I'm thinking about trying food coloring to draw on cake. Would it be like watercolor? I have no idea. Can you mix it with water? I have no idea. Absolutely no clue on that. I don't cook. I have no, I am not, you need to talk to a cake decorator to find that out. Uh, Linda said, I'm trying to make a tree and river painting and I'm having problems with the farthest trees in the middle. Would you glaze over it to push them farther back? And if so, what colors using hooker green? There's no way for me to answer that without seeing it. What I would say post over on Discord, um, you're in our Discord, aren't you? Post over there and, or in one our Facebook or MeWe group and we can, uh, all of us can take a look at it and see if there's any advice we can give you. But like just from reading that, there, without seeing it, there's no way for me to look to just say, oh, this would be the way I would handle that. It depends on where you're at now and I, without seeing it, unfortunately. I can't help. Shelly said, have you used watercolor ink? I'm debating on getting some, but I don't know enough about them. I have not. Three questions in a row I am not helpful on. Uh, Caution Artist at Play said, you're a labeled Jezebel. Oh, that's better. That is much better. Um, Brittany Daniel said, please be willing to do acrylic paints, oil paints, and or watercolor paints on black watercolor paper like Stonehenge Legion black watercolor paper, for example. Um, no, I will not be using acrylics or oils on paper. Probably won't do watercolor either because I don't like it. Like, okay. Watercolor, the thing I like about watercolor is letting the white of the paper show through. So it's a very different thing. I think gouache on black is very cool. I don't like watercolor on black paper. Not saying it hasn't, people haven't made cool things, but it's not something I'm going to do because I don't think it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I want to use the products that are going to work best for what I'm trying to achieve. Black paper is not going to achieve that with watercolor for me, not with the style that I want. I think gouache would be very different. Um, water, uh, acrylics and oil paint, I don't use on paper. So it doesn't even matter what color it is. I could do it on a black canvas, but I'm not going to do it on black paper because I don't feel that paper is the best surface for those mediums. Can you make amazing things on paper with that? Yeah, because you can gesso it. You can do all that. You, you could. Part of me is like, hmm, I could do that for a live stream, being that I'm out of canvases. 
I could gesso a paper and do an acrylic painting on it. It's very different. I don't like the way, I use too much water when I paint with acrylics and that just soaks into that paper. Now the paper's warping. Now I'm fighting with everything, even when you gesso it. It's like, I don't like it <laughs> at all. So that is why you won't see me. Yeah, I, I, I said I could do that. I'm not going to, I'm not gonna do any of those things. I'm sorry. I, I want to please you. I want to do the things you want me to do, but that is not gonna be one of the things I do. Um, black paper I like with colored pencil because you can get enough uh, colored pencil and pan pastels I like with black paper but that's about it I don't yeah no because it's not that you can't do cool stuff but it's not the look that I'm ever going for so yeah I am no fun that was a lot of answers of me saying I don't know no and I don't know um uh, it's a good question good request but yeah How about we chat about upcoming live streams? So I have a note. I don't have any quite any requests yet. But oh wait, I had a request and I said no because I'm a jerk. Um, let's see. Lily said, if a person does a watercolor painting, what pens would you use to draw on top? I've not done that, so I can't say. So yeah, I would check the Mind of Watercolor or Lindsay, uh, the Frugal Crafter, would be my two go-to. I would ask about that that I can think of off the top. I mean, there's other amazing artists too, but those are the two that I would think of off the top of my head who would give you way better answers than I could. Um, you want water dragons? That's a bit much for a live stream. Um, they have a lot of detail. If ink temps was dry, but it, yeah, that worked. Uh, Fl Flamingo, watercolor, and colored pencil. I could do that. Okay, written down. Maybe we'll do that next week. A cardinal in snow closer to Christmas. Yeah, you know, so actually it's, I'm gonna do a cardinal in, uh, uh, for Patreon, like a, a full lesson, because I took a photo recently of a cardinal and he's sitting on holly, which is like, could it be more perfect? That is just, per oh, I love it. So yes, I loved that photo and I, I'll do a different background. I don't think I'm gonna leave the greens in that, but cardinal in snow, did you? Um, but I do like that for that as well. Python said, so random, but I'm making chicken enchiladas on Saturday. I'm way too excited. Oh, I'm way too jealous. Although Saturday is my, I get to eat craft day. So I usually do Chipotle and then I go, there's a gluten-free bakery that has um, cupcakes, pie, cookies, and scones that I like. So I get three things and it's worked. Like I've still been losing weight, but only Saturday I get to eat the bad stuff and then I have to eat good all week. So as a person who had tacos earlier, I cheated. Um, let's see. Collect fine art said I would, okay, I got that one. Marbles and acrylics. Well, I need canvas still. Oops. So I wrote that down. Um, Snow said I wouldn't get Windsor Newton water mixable oils are not professional. I asked them on their website. So here's the thing about these companies calling things professional. If they're light fast, they're professional. Like Lick, uh, um, Liquitex, they claim, because Windsor & Newton and Liquitex, they're really the same company as far as I know, because um, I've worked with them and that was like, they're, there's like an umbrella company. The Windsor & Newton's one part of it, Liquitex is their acrylic, whatever. But they, um, they list their Liquitex Basics as student brand except they're light fast, so they're fine. They're not as pigmented, but for how I work, they work better, which, and I'm using them on professional artwork, therefore they are professional. Um, but yeah, they'll, they'll do that. They kind of try to do it as like, here's our tier as far as how, how high the quality is, but that doesn't mean that they're not light fast. Like the quality versus light, but not necessarily the same thing. So they're still able to be used on professional artwork. Um, yeah, and Windsor Newton being, again, they are with uh, Liquid, Liquitex, they've done that, they've said that where my favorite, they say, is not professional, but they are, so okay. Um, however, I get where they probably were just a crappy paint, so that's gonna make the experience less. But why? Like, I don't understand. You, you're not gonna convince me of the why I should use that over just using oils in a traditional medium. Like, if I want water-based or water-soluble, I can use acrylics. I mean, yeah, okay, you get this at the right time, so okay, fine. There, there, there are legitimate reasons. But yeah, I'm like, I just don't think the benefits are there. I, I don't see it. I like. I like my real oils. Um, people get so mad at me for that. Like I've gotten the angriest letters about that I shouldn't be telling people that, it's bad for the environment. And I'm like, you don't understand how talk things, like mm, you don't understand how that works. Um, but anyway, let's see, scrawling. 
I just jumped too far. Um, okay, let's go through. I'm missing a bunch of these now. I'm way behind, whoops. I'm just jumping through trying to catch up. Um, Clark Feinart said, yes, once you get familiar with the Schmincke, you will definitely know if you like them or not. Yeah. Uh, please be willing to do. Okay, I got that one. Okay, this is, uh, Nick had this up. Python said, I'm going to use the term label lady of the night from now on. <laughs> you try to word things in an appropriate manner for YouTube and you get some interesting, yes. Um, Wade, step chewing. I know you're itchy. Have you tried drawing a project with a palette knife only? I have, I've done that actually several times. Um, I know I did some with Smart Art Box. Uh, was probably my more recent, but it's been a while. I wanna do that for a, a live stream one of these days. How about you use those watercolor stretcher bars you bought a while back? Yeah, I need to use those. Um, the copper would be good on black paper. Yeah, it definitely would look good on black paper. See, now that would be one of the things I could see doing black watercolor and using this in, in com combination. You could get some cool effects. I'm not saying you can't make stuff cool, but yeah. Uh, Claire Feinart says, Lindsay uses a lot of pens and watercolor together, so you'd probably get lots of good info, info searching her channel. Yeah, and Lindsay is the frugal crafter. If you search that here on YouTube, you'll get information on. She does a lot of mixed media stuff. Um, and she actually talks as fast as I do. So if you're used to me, she will be good for you. I'm just jumping through, trying to get caught up before we wrap this up. Nick said, I can never get a good picture of a cardinal. It seems to me that they have a sixth sense of a camera focusing on them and fly away. I was at the zoo is why. He knew he was, he knew if I'm going to hang out at the zoo, I have to have my photo taken. I think that's why it's the only time I've ever gotten a good photo of one. Um, I think it was on this week's Patreon or not this week, this month's Patreon. It was one of our reference photos. Um, Kestrel in watercolor and colored pencil. Let's see. Let me write that down. It's weird typing. Like my arms are like this to reach to my keyboard. Um, Just scrolling through. Oh, that just jumped. I apologize if I miss people because I am. We're gonna wrap this up. We're almost done. Um, would you draw food like a cupcake or a piece of pie? I can't think of anything that interests me less. I mean, food like cherries or an apple, yeah, but like a cupcake pie, I don't know. I'm just not. Food doesn't interest me that much. I think I don't know. It'd be like drawing a car. It just doesn't interest me. I like when other people do it and I can appreciate the amazingness of it, but I am just not interested in that. Um, let's see. Oil pastel for life. I need to do oil pastel for life, but I'm gonna do a full, I, uh, I got the photo for it. I'm gonna do a puffin oil pastel soon, like in probably next month or this next month. Um, yes, I have, but I need to get faster at them because I haven't used them a whole lot. So on a live stream, I'm a little hesitant because I don't know how long it'll take me. And we all know what happens when I run out of time on live streams things go bad. Uh, do I plan on doing all of your live streams at the specific time of the day? I miss these like crazy, but they're in the middle of the night for me. Yeah, unfortunately, this is the only time I'm able to do them at this point. Um, I used to do them a couple of times a week, but time-wise, like it just wasn't working and people weren't watching anymore anyway. So there was a double hit on that. Um, yeah, at this point, it's just going to be this time of night. But the three plays you can always watch, so I'm sorry. Um... Baby Panda said, Snow Owl and Pan Pastels and Colored Pencil. That guy could do. That actually would look really cool. One of these is going to be next week. I just don't know what. It depends on which photo I find. Uh, dolphin and Acrylics for Dolphin Soul. That's actually a good medium for me to do um, too for those because that goes fast. Okay, we are 10.01, so we're going to wrap this up. I'm going to save that. And thank you guys for watching. And I think the auction is should be closed. Should be.
Do I use acrylic gouache? I do not um, because I don't own any. Not because I don't like it, I just don't own it. I wanna get regular gouache. I like gouache. I haven't used it a lot, but I like watercolor. So see, I could get reg regular gouache and do it on black paper. Then I could, do, I could do that, but I don't have any money right now. So I spent it all on a tablet. I'm broke for a month or two and then Christmas is coming. So, you know, I'm broke for a bit and then we will look into getting some more art supplies to review and test and all that. What am I looking for? There we go. Uh oh, Lean got her chickadee. She messaged or said earlier that this was a must for her. So I'm excited she got it because she wanted it before we even started. So that's exciting. Yay, chickadee, you got a good home. Um, anyway, did I just out you? Did you not? Want, I probably shouldn't out people if they don't want people to know, huh? But why wouldn't you want people to know? Anyway, thank you guys so much. Oh, well, let's see, you're, you're already woohooing. So we're good. Yay. Um, thank you guys for joining. It'll be one of your requests. I'm actually kind of thinking Pam Pastels, a snowy owl with Pam Pastels and colored pencil. If I can find a good photo, that would be amazing coming into winter. So that is definitely coming soon. But anyway, I'll see you next week, next Wednesday, 8 p.m. Central Time. We'll be, we'll be drawing something. And I think that's it. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's all. I don't have anything else fun to talk about. Oh, check out our moderator's channel. Links are in the video description. And I will see you guys uh, next week. Yes, next Wednesday. Bye. <laughs>